okay uh, sorry sorry about that uh, so i was just uh, wondering uh, but thanks first of all for ha having all of us um, on this uh, really nice discussion uh, it's uh, it's been very valuable for me to think about the questions that the science club members posed for uh, this discussion uh, i just wanted to check one thing before we started should the uh, should the panelists keep their video on throughout the session because it might eat into bandwidth for people um people around who might not have great internet um and it would be nice if only the speaker has their uh, video on and others okay. can turn it off okay makes sense all right so we'll do that turn by turn then all right great so um uh, so one of the, uh, the you know this is this is such an unprecedented challenge for each one of us um that is uh, sort of one of the binding factors for this online semester model and it's not just us in at iser but it is worldwide and so you know it's uh, in that sense it's uh, heartening uh, because you are not alone i mean i am not alone and a lot of really intelligent discussions are already happening um around this problem and, and how to deal with it so that way because of that once you know i i got a uh, i got an email from the science club saying that this was the topic that was going to be discussed and you know they were uh, looking for um us to provide some inputs uh, it gave me the opportunity to really start looking um to see what was out there and what people were discussing and i'll just touch upon a couple of points that um the science club had uh, listed and that we just um, that we just heard in the introduction so one of the major i guess concerns or differences between what we are doing right now and what we traditionally do at iser is that your last exam is going to be a very uh, high weightage exam right it's going to be 100% of your grade and that is unnerving i mean uh, even uh you know if i i mean i definitely felt that unnerving and why i can say i felt that unnerving is because i studied in a model like this so i did my bsc in chemistry at jadavpur university and uh, we did have one exam in the middle which was i think 20% or something like that um and uh, devapriya who also i think went through the same system she can also correct me or add to it uh, but i studied in a system where a very large weightage was given to the final exam and uh, it was uh, a system even though it was a semester system uh, it was uh, relatively scary because you know everything depended on that one day of performance those two or three hours you sat in the room and you uh, you know sort of regurgitated a lot of material and uh, you know what if just you know the night before you had a rough night for some reason or something happened you know like it it it, it adds those dimensions to the uh, to the to the problem uh but uh having said that uh most people that i know or most of the um you know most of uh, my friends uh, who were in that system uh thrived in it uh so that's probably the dimension that i'll i'll tell you that story because i think that might help put some perspective and give some practical tips to what can be done in a uh, system like this okay so uh, i just made some notes and i'll uh, tell you so see one of the reasons why uh university most colleges and universities in india even today have this system where the last exam is the heaviest weightage exam and sometimes even 100% right they'll have one exam and the pros of a system like this for uh, the student from the student perspective is that uh, you get to uh, look at the first and the last lecture in context of what you studied okay so it's it's not like you studied you know till mid sem pehla you know 20 lecture pad liya and then the last 20 or whatever uh, you know 15 lectures are for the end sem so you don't really relate how you started off with the subject okay so i really like the idea i mean on or that part at least i like that you sort of integrate what was happening from the beginning to the end and uh, conceptualize it as a one unit rather than as a uh, separate units which happens more when you do um you know the more distributed learning uh, which has lots of benefits so i mean i would i i highly recommend what we have at isers but uh, i i'm just trying to sort of show you the other dimension okay so that that um that that wholesome or that that global perspective is something you know the first and the last chapter uh, class has to be read for your final exam 
is something that has some merit to it okay uh from the con side obviously what i said like you know what if you just had you happen to have a rough night the night before and you know it's just it's so silly that you know those 3 hours will determine everything that happened in the semester so that's i think something that's just just not fair okay from the uh, teachers perspective um the good part again is what is same for the students perspective that i said um but the bad part and of course you know it's less grading okay so believe me teachers love it one exam bas itna hi check karna padega okay but on the other hand uh, the uh, the the con is that i don't get an update from you about what you are understanding what and what you are not understanding which happens through the means of quizzes and exams uh, other little exams in the middle okay so there is obviously a con even for the teacher so um how do you uh, handle this last exam uh, conundrum then i mean how what is what would then be the best way to handle this here are like you know some just practical tips that i have uh, one thing is that make sure that while lectures are happening you are taking your own notes don't wait for don't say that acha kisi ka note scan karke mil jayega that is of course that's it's a good you know it it works out that also works out but in such a situation where it is difficult to just go to your neighbor's room and get their notes or just to sit down with them and get get your explanation take your own notes while the lecture is happening even though the lecture will be available to you to read uh, re, uh, you know go through again etc take your notes for the things that you are understanding well and for the things that you are not understanding well so mark out the things that you are not understanding well because it is very easy to then read your notes and get back to the parts which are not easily understandable okay so that is one thing that i feel really helps me at all times uh, you know throughout this whole um, you know a lot of online talks and stuff that i am going to it helps that i am going to uh, i am taking my own notes because there isn't the opportunity to discuss with my neighbor immediately okay uh secondly um uh, i would typically when i was in the semester system where i had a uh, you know very large waited for the final exam i would come to my room after the classes were done and spend say you know if i had four classes i would spend 20 to 30 minutes just going over what i had written in my notebook and it was not to um it was not a means to do any conceptual deep study at that point but it was just a means to cement what was said in the class uh, in my head so that the next class that i went to the next time i attended uh, the the class uh, it wasn't um, you know uh, uh, it wasn't new i could i could i could understand a lot of uh, what had happened because i had studied the class before immediately and why i say immediately is better than just doing it before the, the next class happens again is because it's freshest now and so you'll need only 20 minutes okay rather than spending you know 30 40 minutes later before the next class happens so a lot of time slot every day after you're done a lot of time slot just to go over the concepts of uh, just to go over what has been taught not the concepts conceptual learning i highly recommend keeping one day of your weekend for that so i am a huge believer of keeping one day of the weekend to do full time pass okay i even today do not do any work on one day of the weekend my students can't get you know don't get answers to their emails and stuff sometimes on one day of that weekend because i like keeping one day to do full time pass do whatever i want just chill do you know have a life okay but on the other six days and especially on the other day of the weekend when i'm not uh, that busy with you know all all sorts of regular stuff i do like to focus a little bit on conceptual learning and it uh, if you if you time yourself that way you can do the parts that you didn't understand very well during your lectures you can make up in that uh, you know the the time that you have assigned over the week okay so these are i think just some practical things that i uh, wanted to tell you um and do do focus do allow yourself some time um if the weekend is not enough do allow yourself some time during the weekdays to go over the concepts to you know sort of take time to understand the concepts and do it as the class is proceeding ideally because it is a little difficult to do all of it together near the end before the exam it gets too overwhelming because the concepts knit with each other as the class proceeds and as the concepts proceed for uh, the bigger picture of the subject okay so the subject matter um 
I would highly recommend again a very practical thing. Mark the textbook parts that are giving you conceptual ideas to what you are learning in the class. Mark them out with the, your, you know, in, in a, an online textbook. Just mark them with markers. If you have a physical textbook, put these sticky notes or something so that you are underlined with a pencil, you know, so that you can get back to the conceptual parts very quickly before uh, you have to perform in an exam. Okay. Um, before the final exam. 20 days before I would start when I was doing this, I would start studying, um, uh, the, studying such that I would finish covering all my material about 10 days before the exam. And, you know, in uh, our system, even at Jadavpur, the teacher taught till the last day and the next day we had an exam. So it wasn't like we had a break, but till 10 days before I would cover everything that is required for the various subjects so that I knew what I needed to cover in the future if necessary. I had 10 days of uh, time okay so time management uh, with regard to these and that because of that sort of making slots making timetables being able to check off what you did is an important part of this whole deal okay and uh, the last thing in this topic that I just wanted to uh, say and I can't emphasize this more so I, I sort of really wanted to leave it for the end is that the easiest way to um, you know get a feel of what is going on in the class is actually by attending the class and not trying to catch up with it later. Okay. So if when the lecturer is teaching, you spend that one hour in the class and just listen to the terminologies that are being thrown at you, the new words that are being introduced, etc. That one hour in my XP, my personal practical XP, I've done this experiment where I bunked class to do something else. And then when I came back, I was like, oh, okay, I tell I take my neighbor's notes and I sit down and try to understand. It takes me two hours to understand what I would have otherwise just sitting in a class learnt in one hour. So why should I sacrifice one hour of time that I can do anything with? And you know, I did a lot of extracurriculars as a student. Why would I sacrifice that one hour when I can just get the, you know, I can get that introduction, that feel just by sitting in class. So th these are the things that I greatly recommend um, doing for handling that last uh, heavy exam that take your notes, your own personal notes so that you can go over them quickly each day. Make time for going over them quickly each day. Don't spend too much time at that point because you'll have other things going on at home, this, that. Keep some time aside in the week where you can go back to conceptual learning for each of these things, things that you didn't understand in your notes. And you can go to a textbook, refer to it, etc. But again, mark out time and uh, make sure you attend your classes. Okay, so I think these were uh, the things that I uh, wanted to just say on this topic. And I'll add on, I guess, to other uh, uh, topics when, uh, you know, the other panelists speak because I, I think my 10 minutes are up. Okay. So thanks a lot. And uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Uh, thanks a lot for your views, ma'am. Uh, if anyone has uh, questions directly pertaining to ma'am's talk now, please put them in the, uh, in the chat box or unmute yourself. Our viewers who are from YouTube, please put them in the YouTube chat box also. We'll paste it here so that Matt can see it. Uh, please note that we'll again have a uh, window for general discussion. Only if the question is directly pertaining to Matt's talk, put it now. Okay, uh, so uh, there's a question by Agam. Uh, many courses already have the full syllabus for end semester exams plus additional continuous evaluation. So the global perspective does exist here. Yeah. Um, so, um, so see, that's what Agam. I don't think I will ever say that having one final exam is a great idea. Okay. But because uh, you know we are in an exceptional situation where we are having to give a full exam, uh, one full exam at the end of the semester. I'm just saying that it's not a new thing that this exists in all more than more universities than not in the world today. And uh, there are good ways of handling it. So that's basically what I what I meant. I completely agree that the global perspective can also be obtained by the model that we have at ICER. I'm, I'm absolutely uh, agreeing to that. Uh, I would just rather, um, uh, you know, tell you all that, you know, it's not uncommon to have what we have today. Do we have any more questions?
please feel free to unmute and ask also okay so vibhor said how can one retain for the longer duration well, something that one has read before i guess that's what you mean with that right yeah okay so um yeah so how do you retain is actually it's 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 a uh, see it's a good question because before the exam the style of studying is one of retaining right like you know you have to you have to memorize some things for the purpose of performance in an exam and there is the other part to the learning which is the conceptual learning okay so the parts that are actually most important for uh, life i would say <laughs> um, i mean academic and otherwise is the parts that are conceptual uh, the part that you do for performance in that exam because you know even though uh, you are having only whatever 50% weightage in your final exam uh, you could just be sick on that day right and so what's the point of having any weightage on these exams is probably the bigger question uh, one should have uh, smarter ways and we should as we as academicians i should as an academician as a, as a teacher should be able to come up with more intelligent ways of judging a student beyond what happens in that 2 hours in a in a closed room under so much tension uh, but uh, so so hence i don't think uh, i don't think the part that i am necessarily um, advocating for is the one that you have to retain it's more about building on the concept so if you take out time regularly to look back and see what you have to uh, understand for getting the class that was taught today you will be able to get tomorrow's class better because it will it generally builds upon what has been taught on the day before or there will be some connection you know in the 19th class for what is taught in the 7th class right so that is what i mean um, as what you need to retain in this over the the long run um, and rather than being a um, uh you know uh, uh, what is necessary for the exam so this retention uh, thing is more of an exam thing uh, which you also need to do you know, that's why i'm saying 20 days before start preparing for the exam don't wait for the last week but um the 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 retention is more of a long term thing which happens throughout the semester okay so do it every day i think is the best way to do it for the long haul all right um there's another question that science club has put up why do we go for one exam only yeah that's actually a good question so it's i think it's more of a practical uh, implication thing at this point uh, because with the ever changing covid situation uh, we are we are struggling um, the administration and icer and the covid task force i am not on the ta task force but i'm speaking um, on behalf of what i hear that we are still struggling with the uncertainties of when and how students can be got back to campus and uh, if we want to have a fair exam it is good if students can be on campus for it and hence the one exam because at this point because you know uh, there is a there is some chance that we will be able to get students um uh, back to campus into regular mode uh, before the exams happen okay so that's that's the reason um agam um for pure memorization the frameworks of active recall and spaced repetition are scientifically shown to be very effective uh, yeah okay so um here it's a comment uh, and i i hope everybody can see the chat window i, I am sure everybody can uh, please look at that there is uh, frameworks of active recall and spaced repetition uh, and there's a youtube channel that uh, agam has referred us to yeah but these are important active re active uh, recalling um and repetition for the sake of memorizing something for an exam and uh, i i actually say it with uh, a little bit more i should say it a little bit more caution but memorizing is not a bad thing uh, memorizing is actually a very powerful uh, tool with regard to um you know being able to carry on active uh, learning uh, even throughout you know research Uh, if i have to always go back and look up what the avogadro number means just because i didn't memorize it when i was uh, in my bachelors uh, there's a problem because it disrupts the conversation happening with somebody if i have to refer i have to you know go and type up and you know look at my smartphone and uh, figure out what avogadro number means okay so there is and there is a value to memorization and along with the value to concepts 
uh, more for concepts, lesser to memorization, but there is a value to it. Um, okay, question from a viewer on YouTube. How could the nature of ex questions on the exam change in the new format? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I guess that will change from, uh, if, differ from field to field, but I can probably give you an insight about, say, you know, chemistry and biology, which I feel um, uh, I can I can speak on more. Uh, I think they will be, the questions might be more of the nature. They won't be, uh, you know, uh, 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 question or, or or most of the questions may not be short questions which just address one part of the study, but they may require you to integrate various things that you have learned along the way to put forth an answer. Okay, that is going to be the difference from the mid sem where just imagine the mid sem you knew fifty percent of the syllabus and sem you know hundred percent of the syllabus. So in the end sem, the uh, instructor may be able to ask you a question that calls upon uh, you know th stuff that you've learned in the uh, first part of your semester and calls upon heavily on that along with what has happened in the second second part of the semester uh, in contrast to what sometimes happens in mid sem uh, in end sem which is that you heavily rely on or either the, you know there's a higher weightage on the second part of the semester over the first part. So I think that might be an active change that happens um, in the NSEM exams, which are heavily or 100% weightage on the NSEM exam. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, thank, thank you, ma'am, a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, or, uh, I would like one other question. Huh, is, uh, what would be? If the COVID situation does not abate within a reasonable amount of time, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know what, Krishna? I think it's uh, we don't know yet. Uh, it's the plan with the COVID task force has been evolving and has been evolving very systematically. You can kind of see how the steps at ICER are being taken. Uh, we don't have a clear direction as to what will be done if the NSM exam can't be held. Uh, you know, in this uh, semester, you saw how uh, we were trying to do the NSEM. We were trying to see if people could come back. And then we finally decided it would be based on the mid-SEM marks, which is all of y'all had uh, that experience. Um, I feel like uh, we'll have to figure out some other strategy for the NSEM exam, of course, because we haven't, we don't even have a mid-SEM to fall back upon. Uh, but yeah, it'll be an evolving, it, it is an evolving decision. Yeah, so we didn't even know that we would be falling back on the mid sem marks for a very long time, even this semester. So I think it will be a very similar thing. As we approach the end of the semester, we'll take a call. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Uh, now I'd like to invite Anupam sir to present his views. Uh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, first of all, let me tell you that, uh, you know, we miss you very much. Uh, usually, the July is the time when we come back after, you know, uh, the summer vacation and we see a lot of people and enthusiasm and everything. Uh, but okay, this is not to be this year. Uh, so, the topic I have uh, thought about uh, that I should uh, uh, take up here or point you out more towards is uh, time management. Uh, that is one of the, in general, most important issue. Uh, we all should learn and must learn, and eventually it becomes very useful, especially in professional career. And uh, and it's also uh, to say that it's really really important in student life as well. Uh, so let me take the perspective of a student and uh, talk about this uh, uh, this from their point of view. Uh, so, uh, as we say in science, uh, first we should understand the problem, and uh, once you once you understood the problem, I mean half of the battle is won. So, for for that, uh, let's understand what do we mean by, I mean, what is it, what 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 a student mean basically, right? Uh, if you if I want to say that it's a job, then what is the job of a student? Uh, so you know the job is that 
we have to study some subject material we are in a program so we have to study that subject material uh, that's just only one one part of the story other part of the story is that uh, you go through uh, personal development uh, you go through you know uh, learning society about society social structure discipline etc etc so you learn many more things uh, however let's let's limit ourselves right now here uh, to think about the subject material which is the kind of uh, 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 key issue right now here so um, what is the meaning of studying the subject material for us right uh, and especially in this present scenario when uh, when uh, earlier we were supposed to be on campus and now we are supposed to be like at our homes uh, and things like that so let me let me put it at little bit numerically like uh, how how these two scenarios differ uh, so when you are on campus you go to class and you attend class and you do a bit of self study and uh, you also learn from your peers so basically learning is you can think of it as a, like you know uh, uh, consists of like three different compartments one is that you are, you uh, you learn when you go to a class you attend the class and you learn there and you do some self study and you also talk to your you know friends you interact with tas and you interact with some teachers and all that in off class hours and uh, that is what learning by learning with learning from peers means so let's say when you are in a uh, semester time here in the campus uh, attending classes roughly would give you like let's say 50% of coverage of a subject material uh then you throw in something like let's say 30% of self study and maybe you learn 20% from your peers a very rough like you know uh, uh estimate here uh for an average student i mean it can vary of course with the like you know some student who like a subject and some student who don't like the subject it can vary a little bit uh but what happens now so if you think about uh, the situation now uh it's like Uh, attending classes is gone out of window right i will i will take i will talk about this uh, in a second uh, uh, like why it is not uh, whatever we do uh, in the present scenario why it's not same as attending classes so it it's going to give you let's say like 30% weightage uh, i mean in even if you like you know overestimate it uh, learning from peers is zero almost uh, what does it bring in it brings in it brings in that self study is like 70% now you have to completely rely on self studying in a way uh, 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 in my childhood i had a similar experience so i will just like to tell you uh, uh, probably didn't happen across the country when i was in high school in 9th and 10th uh, there was this time period which was like you know politically unstable time period and we had this kind of situation that our schools will be closed for months and so on and uh, like you know there was no guarantee that uh, if you go to school today then it will be actually open and you will not just ask to go back home or something like that so so uh, uh, so i have seen that kind of situation and uh, where we were forced most of many of us were forced to rely on self study and uh, that's what the memory brings uh, it to me today in this present situation so it has created this disbalance uh, that uh, uh, something which you could achieve by attending classes now it's like you know practically uh, very limited uh, why do i say that even though we are going to put all kind of effort all the teachers are going to put effort and uh, institute is going to put effort and everybody is putting effort into it uh, 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 let me say this in 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 like clear word uh, teacher is not equal to subject material teacher is much much bigger uh, than subject material subject material can be available in many formats for example formats could be like class notes or textbooks or you can have ebooks or it can be available on internet we are trying to add one more format is video format that's what we are trying to do right now uh, uh, but it's not same as saying that uh, what happens to guided learning like i mean that uh, 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 classroom or institute or teacher or uh, university or school provides you a guided learning and that part is kind of uh, missing here and uh, which also puts more focus on self study in some sense uh, uh, not to say that uh, 
not to say that it also hampers on uh, on the other aspects like personal development and career development uh, what kind of choices you are going to make uh, if you are if you are meeting with a lot of friends and all that it's much easier to figure out all those options and all those uh, 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 details and uh, you know if you hear something like somebody else is talking about something and you learn from that so all it comes down to at the end that how you manage your time in the present situation and when when the focus is more on self study how are you going to manage uh, uh, to spend more time uh, studying on your own and uh, and that's where i say that one has to learn the skill of time management uh, 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 is the situation that where somebody is not going to tell you that okay now you go to classroom now the classroom is over now you are lunch time or now you have like you know dinner time or something like that uh, which is kind of granted for you when you are in campus uh, it, it's kind of somebody gives you a timetable and you have to just follow it and right now you have no timetable i mean you have to you have to make your own timetable and uh, and uh, uh, that's what i want to emphasize that you have to make a timetable for yourself uh, that's very important thing to uh, to learn as well when you become professional uh, person later in your life uh, nobody is going to give you a timetable so you have to make your own timetable and a lot of success is dependent on how good you can manage your time uh, when i was a phd student like some of us uh, were talking to a senior professor uh, uh, i mean i'll tell you the name dipendra prasad so we asked him we asked him a question that how do we study and you know how to become better or what uh, how much time to spend and this that he gave a simple advice one line advice that practice sitting at one place for 5 hours i mean okay for this is for uh, theory and more uh, so he said that practice sitting at one place for 5 hours and uh, that's a key i mean uh, it's very difficult i mean uh, you, you can imagine it's very difficult to do uh, but that's the key that's the key that's how you learn uh, that's how you sit at one place and uh, then you focus yourself to work you are not distracted and uh, you engage yourself with your uh, work your material subject material uh, uh, one should also not uh, uh, forget that there are some little trivial things one can do uh, which kind of brings a little more discipline uh, very trivial things like you should spend a fixed amount of time let's say half an hour in the morning half an hour in the evening to do some physical exercise uh, all these things are important i mean it also gives you focus towards uh, and and makes you feel fresh uh, to to do the work and especially studying and all that it takes a lot of energy and it uh, it, it, it uh, and uh, you know so the discipline some discipline is really really important uh, uh, the one part which is missing uh, is that uh, interacting with peers uh, uh, your friends and colleagues and i must uh, kind of uh, tell you that I, I must encourage you that you should really talk to your friends regularly you might be talking to some of your close friends and things like that but i think it's more important to also talk to like much 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 broader number of people uh, people with whom uh, not necessarily like you know very close or something like that i mean uh, because those those people also bring different perspective then the discussions are not about just gossip i mean the discussions will be more like you know uh, about academic or about uh, more general nature where you learn learn things uh, so yeah maybe i'll stop here and uh, uh, i'll better answer some questions if uh, people have some questions so we have a question in the chat box okay could you give us some tips on how to make a timetable uh, well you just open a excel file and you put down 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock and so on and you say that you are going to study this many hours you are going to have breakfast at that time you are going to have lunch at this time you know as as simple as that i'm not saying that you have to do something very fancy and you you fix that number certain number of hours that you are going to study you know, it's dedicated to that. Anything else? Anybody else? Anyone else has anything to say? Do we have any more questions? Uh, sure, I have a question. 
uh actually like uh, every semester there is some po- at some point you is like uh, there is too much and you get too depressed and so you have to uh, like cover up all the backlog you have had but this time right. you have option to just drop off credits i am finding it like a little bit this like if you have lot of backups coming up and then you will just drop off courses like how will you deal with that no for freedom so it may get gone wrong yes uh, i agree with you that sometimes with uh, more freedom uh, sometimes more freedom is not good because it 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 makes you it makes you like you know uh, take stupid decisions so sometimes it's much easier that somebody tells you that no take this many credits right so but maybe some things are forced under the circumstances that uh, you cannot uh, you cannot if you cannot do things so i think this is done to take in account uh, those people who may not be able to uh, cope up in the sense of like you know let's say infrastructure sense right uh, some people may not have access to internet or some uh, it's not for the routine students it's not for the good student or people who have all the access and all that they should not they should not be taking this option in general so so i think it's just the options are provided uh, keeping in that uh, keeping that those kind of situations in mind sometime i am not able to finish my task in given time period in that case what can we do to manage our time table uh yes that is a good question and uh, uh, generally what do you mean by not being able to finish the task is, is that uh, like let's say you are studying some particular topic and you got uh, very involved or you got stuck at some point and then you are not able to of course finish in the time so uh, uh, so you should fall back on like what you would have done in the, in when you were in campus right uh, you should fall back on tas you should fall back on teachers you should communicate with teachers you should communicate with your uh, friends uh, form a group uh, with people with whom you are comfortable form a group and you discuss with them uh, you know nowadays it's much easier to interact with other friends like you know you can make a whatsapp whatsapp group chat or uh, you can do some online uh, group you can form and you can ask question to other people also so yes if you get stuck you should not uh, just like you know, keep it to that uh, uh, but it's important to move on question yes making a timetable is easier than following it yes that's true i find myself wasting time changing timetable again and again what do you suggest uh, yeah i mean it's true it's it's very easy to say that make a timetable but what i mean by making a timetable is that fix certain number of hours to uh, like you know studying dedicated time to studying and uh, you should not be distracted in that time period it should not be like okay you sit down with a book and you want to study a particular subject but your laptop is open and you suddenly open youtube and start watching something in in that time period uh, yeah so that's what i mean by like don't do that uh, in that sense so i mean time table changing yeah i mean time table changing is not a really good idea that you keep changing time table every day yeah. think of more that's why we make a time table once in a semester i mean it's for the whole semester then nobody argues about it then can i just add one thing here to pranav's yes, question yeah yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so pranav this is something that i guess all of us struggle with okay that you know we <laughs> as anupam rightly said it's not easy at all for everybody so it is a great question and yeah, yeah. i think one of the things that have helped me is that i also uh, schedule for you know doing just time pass stuff in between my regular stuff so, so i give myself breaks so like it's i won't say that i'm going to study for you know 4 hours at a stretch i cannot study for 4 hours or i can't write a paper for 4 hours at a stretch so i make say 2 hour chunks and then i give myself some you know 30 minutes to do like i don't know browsing or answer my whatsapp yeah, yeah. or whatever or just have a chai just go for a just have sometime. a chai exactly yeah. exactly you know so so i think don't be too hard on yourself give yourself that you know give yourself those breaks 
uh, which allow which you know you you can look forward to once you're done with your focus study like you know what um, anupam was rightly saying don't do youtube in that time because you will have half an hour or whatever one hour to do youtube after that so give yourself that don't be too hard on yourself so i think that might help to stick to a timetable uh, anupam i was just uh, thinking yes yes yeah. yes yeah i mean relaxed break is fine just to relax yourself a little bit but uh, like the breaks should not be used to do another distracting thing then you will not come back in that sense yeah yes 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 yeah absolutely yeah. so but yeah distractions should can also be programmed in maybe <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. what i'm thinking yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, sir, we have one more question by me here in chat window. Uh -huh. uh, what should be a good approach to study as effect as uh, effective? Okay. Uh, so, what should be a good approach to study as effectively, time-wise as possible for a course being presented in this online manner? Uh, so uh, uh, one of my suggestion is uh, generally that when the classroom teaching happens, it's true that uh, uh, let's say half of the student uh, actually follow the material what is happening in the class. But whereas some people who do not follow even the material, but for them there is a timeline set that, okay, this part of the material is over now and then we move to the next chapter and so on. So that kind of gives you a timetable in a way of that particular course that with what speed you should move on. So uh, in that sense, you should pay attention to when the courses begin and when, let's say, uh, certain lectures are uploaded, that is going to give you a timeline that, you know, now you finish this much material in this time and then move to the next step uh, and so on. Uh, as opposed to like, you know, if you take if you take like a summer vacation, then OK, fine. If you're reading a novel, you finish in five days. But when you start reading something else uh, then you get stuck and then you go here and there and suddenly you see one month is passed and then you don't come back so that's the difference between classroom uh, teaching when like you know every week or every two three days uh, uh, a little progress is made and that is important to uh, uh, stick to i mean uh, in general okay another question we always get excited and uh, uh, make timetables and all, but when the exam and quiz fears are <laughs> good motivation to study for exams. Now, in this situation, that motivation is also gone. What can we do? I absolutely agree with you. Uh, the uh, in fact, I I mean, I'm not I'm not a fan of exams, but I like to do that way in class when I'm teaching, uh, especially the first year, second year. I've been teaching always. I give quizzes like every every alternate week, certainly. And uh, lots of people have given me feedback, lots of students have given feedback that they like it uh, because it actually makes them study and they're happy with it. And that uh, little progress is made every time. And uh, like, you know, the bulk of the pressure is not uh, at one exam also and things like that. Um, uh, I think what one can do, um, what one can do is that actually solve some questions or exercises every week. Or uh, you can also ask your teachers to send some questions to practice, let's say, practice questions or even like, you know, uh, unofficial quiz. But of course, when you don't have marks, then you also don't take it seriously. That's also true. But certainly that can bring in some discipline that you solve questions every week, some, some exercises every week. Uh, certainly for like, you know, math courses, it's very, very helpful uh, if you do uh, something regularly. Uh, one more question. I tried once before to. Uh, plan a timetable and break up the study period into 1.5 to 2 hours, chunks and half hours break. But it happens that when I'm actually supposed to take the break, I spend time thinking about what I was doing last and I don't manage to relax. This affects the next study period. Could you suggest something for this? Um, uh, true, uh, switching yeah between two subjects or two topics sometimes is not easy especially if you are engrossed in the subject you like it and uh, you want to like you know move forward in that and uh, it you you keep thinking about it uh, sometimes it's really uh, uh, yeah sometimes it's really uh, uh, takes your uh, like you know you feel like you know spending more time 
so sometimes it's okay i mean to do that but you cannot keep doing every day that way like you have to go to the other topic also so okay maybe we will take more questions later and right now let's move on to the uh, to other people's uh, talks thanks a lot sir thank you yeah thank you uh, now i would request devapriya ma'am to present her views hi am i audible yes ma'am okay hi um so i thought of uh, looking at uh, two questions uh, one is how can faculty deal with the lack of responsiveness of students in online classroom uh but now i realize that i don't think there are that many faculty members but anyway i think it would be a good perspective even for the students to sort of know how we think about it and uh, they can give their feedback if uh, you know if it's uh, not the correct perception so my uh, take on it is not really uh, to talk about what are the methods that one needs to because i think at least uh, last week there was a really good talk on various kinds of methods that one could uh, take up uh, to deliver lectures and to communicate different kinds of materials uh, on the online or offline mode so i'm not going to go over that but rather i would try to share a few uh, personal experiences that i gathered or managed to gather in a relatively short time last semester when i was teaching uh, on the online mode um to uh, over 200 students so it's one of those introductory classes that i suppose and uh, in the beginning i should say that it's more about uh, the mistakes that i made and i realized that those should be corrected so it's uh, i'm sure that if there are students from that group they will recognize that i have done the same thing that i'm saying that don't do that okay so um so i think the most scary part as a teacher when i started teaching in the online mode and uh, at that point of time we all thought that it's just to translate whatever we used to do in the classroom to the online medium was not to see the facial expression okay and uh, uh, at least for my perspective i really uh, time myself and uh, how ever i i plan to design my uh, lectures they are pretty much dependent on the response of the students sometimes not even uh, you know not somebody raising a hand but i could see somebody is yawning or others are sort of texting so i try to tune uh, the lectures accordingly not in not by any way compromising on the topics but probably uh, the timeline and that cue is completely gone because when i'm trying to deliver a lecture either in an offline mode or in an online mode with uh, like 200 uh, windows uh, it's even if i know that there are people and if i want i can see their expression it's not really possible to monitor them continuously so for all uh, purposes that cue is gone so i'm basically talking to a completely blank window and uh, okay there is a comment we cannot hear you properly so now is it better yes it's better Hello. now okay uh so i think that's a very important thing that we have to uh keep track of that uh when i first started teaching i always thought that uh i would just mimic the way i taught in the class and that doesn't work very well the first reason i would think is i after teaching let's say a couple of lectures or after delivering a couple of lectures i just realized that uh i never could have finished those lectures in that specific time and the reason being in the class we get interrupted we get questions we basically time ourselves based on the expression that whether some students are getting the concepts or not and because we do not get interrupted in the general classes uh, 
delivered over online or even if we are recording it and sending it offline it's very important to restrict the materials to maybe at max a 40 minute thing not really a full blown one hour thing because it's definitely does and you know it overshoots the total time management and for our students perspective also it's sort of overwhelming the second thing is, um, I, I think I, I generally do it, but I think uh, even for other uh, faculty members, it might be very important to share a calendar in the beginning of the course of rough idea of what are the things that are going to be covered in the weekly fashion. And as we have already decided, uh, uh, something like... Uh, that we are going to have only one online session, but the rest are just going to be teaching materials. It should accompany, by, I mean, we should send some uh, either video or audio files. I think that distinction is very important. So let me first talk a bit about the offline materials. Uh, I have already mentioned that the materials should be restricted time-wise at least roughly to 40 minutes, not full-blown one hour, because it's actually is equivalent to a one-hour class. The second point, I think it was emphasized by many of the people that when you are sending the offline material, and at this point, I'm primarily talking about either a video or an audio file. And the audio file is actually my favorite because uh, it takes up very less space and it's a short file. Moreover, um, then when the students are listening to it, they can actually try to connect the points that are being emphasized with some of the study material, like either uh, slides or uh, textbook uh, materials. And the point that Amrita mentioned before about the notes and writing your no own notes, it basically helps in that respect. So I know it's not the most student-friendly thing in the beginning. It might uh, even uh, you know, make some students feel that it's unnecessarily complicated. A video with a nice presentation with the um, you know, face of a happy teacher looks the best way to go about it. But um, I think some people are good visual learners and some people uh, do much better when they just hear the audio. But for both of them, it's important that you assimilate that and you write your own notes. You wouldn't believe. I still remember some of the concept from my BSc or MSc days with the doodles I made in those notebooks. Okay. Because I was a visual learner, and those customization that I did on my own actually helped me to retain some of the things that I did, maybe as, you know, just as a concept, my own way of internalizing it and then reproducing it. So I don't remember those uh, texts. I don't remember those, uh, you know, uh, textbook pages or things like that. But those important things, the way I understood and I reproduced, still uh, are with me, OK? So I think uh, during the course of the lectures, it's extremely important that you go along with it. And having these audio files uh, and uh, supplemented by some reading material, I think that can be a good starting point for the students where they can uh, start to build their own notes. And those notes can uh, take you a long way, OK? Um, the second thing that um, I faced, and, and uh, I am grateful to the students for pointing it out, that I used to tell them about a lot of reference books. And uh, then uh, somebody pointed out that exactly how do you, I mean, where do you want us to find those reference books? And then I realized that many of the reference books are not really available online. Even in the library, they might have the physical copy, but not the uh, electronic version. So especially when we are referring to you know, certain books and stuff, as uh, teachers, I think it's very important that we actually check whether it's available. If it's available, then uh, correctly point the sources. 
if it's not available and if you have personal copies checking the copyright rules and eventually figuring out how much of it which is very important uh, can be translated either as a written notes or as a you know, photocopies of some of the pages because simply saying that there is there exists a reference book i think sometimes it uh, doesn't work especially in these kind of circumstances uh, the other thing that uh, is important is uh, when making these uh, lectures, especially these uh, student-less lectures where we are simply making these uh, either video or audio files, uh, we need to stop and take breaks and basically emphasize concepts. Okay, uh, It's generally done in the class by the students Okay, by seeing expressions. Because we do not have it, we just have to force ourselves to do it on our own. Okay. Um, then the second uh, component of it is the rules of the TAs, or if there are no TAs, then uh, even the instructor can do that. Is to have is to ask for questions every week. The students can email them, and the TAs ideally can go through the questions because there are quite a bit of repetition of questions, and then we can group those questions and post answers to them again this will be kept uh, in a either in a in the uh, google uh, classroom or through the email so that it doesn't consume a lot of uh, you know uh, email i mean a uh, lot of data for the people who do not have access or do not have the luxury to access a lot of data uh, the final part is the online interaction which we are at least at this point plan to have at least once a week i think it's extremely important that both the students and the teachers are uh, sensitive to the online interaction that we shouldn't cover new materials in there because again it's we may miss out on clearing doubts and things which are not really easy to communicate through emails and stuff. And uh, one thing that often helps is even if you, even within one hour, if you make sort of uh, some groups which take the priority of asking questions at different time slots. And uh, that way we get the maximum questions and we can go over the discussion. Uh, we can also have uh, some of the assignments, exercises. Uh, but not really covering new material. I think new material, covering new material or a traditional lecture, we can keep only for the offline mode. And I found at least for many of the students who do not have access to a specific time with the maximum amount of data, that's, uh, uh, that's not going to work out very well if we also try to utilize that online uh, uh, interaction time for covering new material. Now, I think my time is all, almost over. I'll uh, very quickly touch upon uh, some of the things that uh, Amrita said and I think Anupam also mentioned. The time management is extremely important. And I think, uh, you know, I uh, realized it as I grew up uh, that uh, I think many of the important things of the grueling exams that Omrita was talking about, uh, because I went to the same institute and same university where we were not even given any quizzes or any midterm exams. It was all one last exams. And it was a non-negotiable timing. So I think one important lesson I learned from there is the time management. And it's not about those last three hours. It's about the last one month where you have to assimilate everything. And you cannot do that unless you are going parallelly with the course. So, and that still helps me now when I'm basically juggling between, you know, work from my uh, research and administration and uh, the requirement of a five-year-old. So I'm trying to manage this, and I'm, I think a lot of people do the same thing. And that time management is a very important, uh, I mean, important aspect of it. Okay. Uh, I know it. Up to this point, it all sounds really bad, and um, you know, means a lot of work. But just to 
give you some perspective uh i look back about my college days or my university days i remember the uh, courses certain courses okay uh there are completely two different aspects of those two some courses remember very clearly and both of them benefited and i think those courses so i'm avoiding those courses which i remember and uh, i find be very useful course that i still remember and i still uh, really need to get out of them have to of here one type of had the best of teachers come to the class and would mister as you um, and uh, what do they would basically walk you through every part of the course and would require anything else apart from following that and understanding everything okay all you have to do is attend the classes take your class notes and that's it and your voice is breaking and the other type of course which i still remember and benefit a lot out of it are the courses we were taught by not so good teachers it forced me to understand the course it forced me to start to text it forced me to keep that course to myself on my own and believe me after that many years uh, i felt in quite useful so uh, just to give you a relative positive note uh, it's a, i mean it's not a desired circumstance where we are sitting right now but take it that this also gives you to this uh, this sort of an exposure where you be a teacher and you can sort of develop this habit of being yourself a very old way and it will long go along so i'll take a question sorry to interrupt ma'am your voice is breaking quite a lot for the last 1 to 2 minutes okay um so I don't know exactly what are things that you guys missed. So can you give me a few of what the last thing you guys heard? I think Devaplay, you were saying that um, there was a th there were some courses uh, which uh, you know uh, were were helpful, like or the or the ways in which it was helpful for you uh, because of the system you were studying in. Yeah, so it is nothing like. A, Uh, yeah, all said is there are obvious things. There are good courses. Teachers trained us through all the concepts. And didn't really have to put a lot of effort apart from just following their direction. Okay. Uh, okay. I think the problem next so it's a uh, break. And last kind of courses that I still remember and I got benefit out of. the process which were not well it was uh, not organized it was not taught uh, well by me but that forced us to actually get to it and get got it by following all kind of material that we can get so i think that those kind of courses be really uh, completely So make a complete opinion. So please, in these senses, uh, think about those two. Uh, Ma'am, can you try switching off the video if the audio works better? Uh, okay, I don't think I have uh, else to say at this point. So. Uh, I think we are already running uh, short of time. So, is there are questions? We have a few questions in the chat window. Uh, I I could only the problem in the network and voice breaking. But let me see. Does one maintain balance between eating 
for a beneficial and distraction. Um, I guess that was a question for me, or um, so I, I guess it was a question for me, so yeah. Uh, Okay, so one question was as the uh, faculty, I had a general question during online. At time limited, we feel guilty to ask more than few questions, especially in subject we are interested in, as feels consuming other time. Even though asking is an option, but still remains, how we can get out with minimizing public time, what mode will facilitate? I have to have doubt sessions like emails, Google Docs, something else. Yes. So, ma'am, can uh, you try I, using another mic? Uh, is it bad? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I think uh, I mean, uh, I think there is a problem with the connection. So maybe I will just stop at this point. <laughs> I. Uh, thanks a lot for your views, ma'am. Ma'am, if it's possible, please try to answer the questions in the chat window and people might get their answers uh, through text. Okay. I'll try to, but the problem is I am again accessing it from my phone and it's difficult to answer questions. So uh, it might take me a few. I mean, one question was about uh, clearing out. So I think. At least for me, email works just fine. If you send emails, it's fine. Uh, okay, ma'am. Uh, th thanks a lot. Uh, now, to sum up the day, I would like to call uh, Sunita, ma'am, to present her views. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, if it's okay with everyone, then I'm just going to present a few slides. Um, I'm just let me know if you can see it, okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So uh, I'm just going to present a few slides on making the best of the online semester. And uh, I will first, so Agam had a question about how faculty members are going to deal with this. And I'm, my first uh, perspective is that of a faculty member. So it all starts with making the lectures. And there are you know, several modes of making lectures. But uh, for me, personally, as a physics faculty member, I have to do lots of derivations, formulae, and all that. And it's not useful to type long derivations and formulae, uh, because half of a long proof or a derivation gets cut off from slide to slide. And it's very tempting when we do this typing to skip steps for brevity in a slide. So this is not useful for the student because the difference between reading a book and blackboard learning is that the instructor goes through all the steps um, slowly on the board, leaving only reasonable doable steps as an exercise for the student. So I have to mimic this somehow, you know? So the first thing, that I'm going to do at least because diagrams are also important for me and my subject. So I'm going to do a combination of type notes and handwritten derivations. And these are not handwritten actually. They are done on something called bamboo paper with a stylus pen. And uh, that would be something that I will do often um, just to solve these problems. And I do think there's some good point about online notes. Um, the, the best point is when you are teaching a class of about 80 or 100 students, you know, there are some students who have the bad luck to be sitting in the back and they really have to strain to see the blackboard. Uh, you know, I have tried sitting in the back and I can't see a thing. So the handwritten notes with a stylus pen have the feel of a whiteboard and I can actually sketch or write live on the file while speaking and recording the video. So this is something that um, I will find myself doing often. So I'm going to mimic the Blackboard experience as much as possible for the student. 
Now, in my subject, I wouldn't really use a picture-in-picture picture where the student can see me speak while viewing the slides because that just takes too much uh, bites. But I would attempt to engage attention with the voice. And um, I would also insert some points to ponder about conceptually, post every now and then, at least once every 15 minutes, I would have points to ponder about. I would again get back to those points on Google Classroom, chat mode, and during the contact hour. Um, so you can also use elementary whiteboards, which come with the Windows or the uh, you know, Mac or whatever, to answer doubt using contact sessions. So here I have a little sketch which I made very quickly uh, on the most elementary whiteboard that's available with Windows. And you can see that you can already you know, sort of explain a lot using these kind of diagrams. Um, the other thing that I want to speak about, uh, which I want to spend some time on, is the contact or office hours. So Devapriya, uh, you know, sort of mentioned that, uh, you know, there, it's useful to have some online contact with the students. So I have found it useful to have dedicated office hours for a course that are distinct from lecture hours. So at present, one of the lecture hours is designated a live session. But unfortunately, because for us, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the course material has to be covered, I would still be lecturing in that slot. I might not introduce new material, but I would still be talking a lot and, you know, showing some slides. So it's nice to have another extra contact hour on Google Meet where any student, if interested, can contact me and ask questions and doubts. So this is something voluntary. This is something which I do even in my normal course, right? Uh, I have an extra office hour. So that's something I would still do. I would have a Google Meet hour. And this I tried last semester when everything went online. And I found that a lot of students connect on the Google Meet, but remain silent. So perhaps they are waiting for someone else to begin first or, you know, they don't know how it's going to proceed. They're just shy. Maybe they're just thinking that a lot of people want to ask questions. We shouldn't ask too many. Uh, but in such situations, it is nice for the instructor to lead the discussion by bringing up important points or assignment questions and asking if people have understood. I think that this opens up the discussion. So that's something that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be leading the discussion. Uh, I'm not going to keep silent and wait for everyone to ask questions. Now, one nice suggestion that I heard from a talk last week was that at the end of office hour, ask the students to record on the Google Meet chat board what were their muddy points in previous lectures. You know, what were the hard points? I'm going to save the transcript of the chat and use this information to prepare additional material to help the students. So. Um, Please, students, if your instructor asks you to do this, uh, interact on the Google Meet chat board and you know, help the instructor know what were your muddy points. Uh, the last thing which I would really think about as a faculty member, which Devapriya has also touched upon, is that you know, there is no library. So how do you cope with an online semester? You can't get the hang of a subject merely from the course notes. So um, I would definitely suggest e-books or e-resources all, already available on the web. Um, you can ask for e-books from the library. The instructor can ask for e-books from the library. And uh, that is something which the library will look into immediately. And this I speak as the chairperson of the library committee. So um, there are also excellent e-resources available on the web, which I would do. I would send videos, images, and other colloquium style talks in that area for the interested student. And videos and images can also be embedded in the lecture. This makes it sometimes better than a Blackboard lecture. So these are all things which I'm going to explore. Now, just some tips for the students, which is, you know, how can you use online learning in the most effective manner? And I will just add to some of the things which my uh, colleagues have already said. Uh, the best thing which I think about having recorded online lectures is that you don't miss a single lecture because you fell sick. You can hit the pause button as much as you want to digest the lecture content before proceeding further. You can revisit the lecture whenever you want. Okay, so these are advantages. 
but you should try as far as possible to not be too behind the schedule in the timetable or else you will accumulate a huge backlog. Uh, there are challenges in that and already my colleagues have talked about it. You know, I would suggest that you do your assignments on time, that weekly uh, instructors post questions to think about or assignments. And uh, you do the assignments on time because they are the only way for the instructor to know how you're doing and help you during the course. Um, some tips here are that online content is best digested in bite-sized pieces. So I may have to post an online lecture which is 45 minutes long, but you can hit the pause button every 15 minutes and ask if you have understood the content so far. Don't proceed with the lecture until you have understood the previous 15 minutes. Or if you have not understood it, then note down whatever questions or doubts you may have during the lecture. Send them via Google Classroom's chat board to the instructor immediately while they are fresh in your mind so that he or she can respond. You can even write down your question on a piece of paper and take a picture with cam scanner and send it to the instructor on the email address for the course. Um, I would respond immediately to such questions because then there is some continuity. It, you get the feel that you are in the class and you're asking questions and somebody is responding immediately. And if the answer requires a derivation, then I would quickly respond using the whiteboard and the stylus pen and sending a PDF file of this. So I would try to mimic the blackboard as much as possible while answering your questions. So please, uh, you know, if you have questions or doubts, ask them immediately. And the office hour, I think, which I mentioned, is very important because the Google Meet office hour and the live session are the only contact hours in an online course. So it's important to make effective use of them. There is no question that's too trivial or silly. There's no limit on the number of questions that you can ask. Please ask as many as you want. If you are not following a derivation, just ask. It. You can also ask any questions on the subject arising from your extra reading. This will help converting the office hour into a nice discussion that benefits whoever is present. And I would also recommend hanging, hour during off hanging around during the office hour if you have the time. Uh, even if you don't have a question, listen to others' questions. Feel free to join in and respond. And do the same on Google Classroom's chat board. So when I teach a course, I will be posing some questions on the Google Classroom's chat board. Um, as, as something as the core of a discussion. And please feel free to join in and respond to that. Okay. So these are just some tips which I had. And now I'm going to just stop sharing. So let me see if I can um, open up. So now can you see me instead of seeing the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I will now take some questions, and I will see if there are some questions for uh, uh, in the chat box. OK, so the most uh, difficult thing for us to deal is not seeing faces and getting real-time face <laughs> back. That is from Anupam. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's, that's, uh, uh, that's really difficult. OK, so uh, are there any questions for me specifically? Okay, so in one so, of our classes, yeah, so Agam has a question. One yeah. of the classes, the instructor used to ask a question at any point in the class to a person selected randomly. I'm sure this was unpopular among students, but it probably kept everyone more attentive and engaged. Do you have some thoughts on this? So I wouldn't pick on a person, uh, Agam. I wouldn't do that, but I would definitely pose questions from time to time. I do that when I'm teaching. And I would definitely do that in my online lectures as well. So last semester, I just wanted to add here. Last semester, I did something similar, not exactly this. Yeah. Uh, that randomly, I announced the name of 10 students in the class, and I asked them to meet me outside Yeah. after the class hour, Yeah. instead of asking a question in the class. Yeah. Uh, just to personally interact and get their feedback. And you know, people feel like uh, they can directly talk. Or, uh, say something. Right.
So Shriya has a question. Uh, one nice thing I noticed is that a greater fraction of the class was present for the Google Meet sessions and everybody could hear the doubts as opposed to much lesser students going for the office hours on campus. Uh, that's correct, Shriya. I think that it's very good to hang around for the Google Meet sessions office hour. Even if you don't have a question, just hang around for it. Uh, I think that's that's very good. Because then you hear other people's questions, you hear other people's, uh, you know, it's people have read something more on the on the subject and then you hear that. It's very nice. It's the only time you have to interact with other people in the class as well. So I think it's very important to hang around. OK, are there any other questions? If not, I'm going to uh, turn off my video to save some bandwidth. Uh, I want to uh, Agam's question, which is at the 7.11 PM. That's the identifying thing that I can see there. Uh, yeah. That for, um, you know, how are teachers trying to incorporate, uh, you know, the part that is, you know, what Anupam pointed out. There's really, there's, it, this is not a substitute. Uh, this can never be a substitute for a student-teacher interaction that happens in a class, whatever study material is available. And um, I think Sunita did an excellent uh, job of putting forth, uh, you know, what um, right. had done, Devapriya has done, etc. Um, uh, so, so I feel like uh, the the forums, like having, if possible, attending forums and asking questions in public spaces rather than over email uh, to to the instructor. So even if there's a Google group, you'll have or what, asking a common question there um and uh, and following the the student based discussion so students also have to be very proactive with typing in their answers so instead of the chatter that happens in class the back and forth that's happening in class if students could be um also typing in that chatter i think that will probably help some even you know, you know right now i'm i'm continuously reading the chat messages and my my brain is working so i feel that uh, replicating that uh, probably for the students who can, uh, you know, type uh, in a type easily into their um, into the, the chat window would be very helpful. To so the real time uh, uh, sort of uh, understanding or reaction is very helpful. And this I say from one experience that I have had of um, a teacher in education at at UC Berkeley where I was doing my postdoc, uh, she actually used to have the students tweet. Uh, throughout the class because these are huge classes these are like you know 800 people classes and uh, so the students used to keep tweeting their uh, immediate reactions uh, while the class was going on now i thought it was immensely disruptive because i am not a you know i'm not a tweet person but uh, i mean I, i'm just like you know i, I tweet when I, when I really feel the need to but other than that i don't but i think uh, that real time thing really helps in a situation like this. The real time reactions, which is what, say, Devapriya was mentioning that I can't see the face of the student. So if I, even if I can see the comment, uh, I can quickly adjust my, uh, you know, the ex especially for the office hour time, uh, I can adjust my spiel to to that, and it will allow other students to incorporate what their colleague is saying. So the uh, student student learning might happen better. So I feel like that is an extremely important thing to give real time reaction. And our medium right now is, you know, the best medium which is accessible to all perhaps is text because, uh, you know, it may not be possible to see people. That's what I just wanted to add. So Google Classroom has a chat board. So that's really good. Yeah, excellent. So then that chat board basically can be used as a real time yeah. reaction. And, you know, yeah. as I said, there really isn't a silly answer or a silly question or a silly comment. Just put it there. You know, I mean, it does not matter. It will, nobody remembers it. Okay. And so, so just do it. Do it. So I just wanted so to. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, so I just want to add one more thing that uh, in Google chat window often found is um, once the students to type or 
uh, they put question. Often, other students volunteer and stand, and so it's it's sort of a, a maybe at the end uh, you have to you know clarify some of the doubts and stuff. But this intern happens naturally, so that's what I want to add. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, add. Maybe everybody knows it. It's a, uh, uh, it's uh, what do you say? Open secret that uh, most of the books or advanced books, etc., there are pirated copies available. For the first time, I want to say openly that please use it. Which is which nobody wants to say openly, but right now I want to say it openly. Please make use of it generously. Help your friends. You know, talk to other people and find it out where you can get it from. And uh, I'm sure many people know it already. If you don't know, you can write email to us, and we can tell you where to get it from. Okay, Anupam, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I'm in the library committee. I didn't hear that. No, I just wanted to. I, I, mean, I put a smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. In the yeah. chat window, my immediate reaction. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I don't want to say openly the name of the site because it is being recorded. But I am just saying that please use it and ask your friends. Yeah, anybody else has question? So I just had one suggestion for the students, and I hope there, there are some Lit Club members on this. So I was just thinking while we were doing, when we were going through the session right now, that you know it might be an excellent idea to say plan a Hemingway debate style thing around uh, our online classes better than in-person classes. Because what it will allow you to do is get forth the perspectives of why, I mean, what are the good things about online teaching? I know, I mean, all of us are not comfortable with it, but there you know, I say this from my experience of being in two of these debates, one as a speaker against uh, the website called SciHub, which, um, you know, pirated papers are available on. And um, in that I was against, I was against having SciHub. And it was, you know, uh, it was an interesting perspective to take. And but it helped, uh, it helped me really understand what, you know, what is the other side thinking? What is, uh, you know, why are, um, you know, the uh, American Chemical Societies and, uh, you know, all these other people, why are they putting these charges up? And secondly, how can you work with it? How do you work if you were going to follow that system, even though it's not a pleasant system at all? Okay, so it might be a good idea to do a, you know, to have an intellectual conversation about the, the, the pros and cons. Uh, which might allow for points, and, and I mean, just to you know, we we managed to convince um, people to decide against Saihab by the end of that debate. <laughs> I don't know whether I, I really wanted to do that, but that that's what the outcome was. Um, so I'm just saying that it might be a useful tool for us to analyze in a more sort of detailed manner through a debate. Uh, whether online classes are better than, um, I mean, and the title can, you know, you have to, you have to put one title, so it can be, are online classes better than regular classes? And I'm just, just a suggestion I'm throwing there. Do we have any more questions or comments? Please feel, feel free to put them on the chat window or unmute yourself. Uh, with this, I guess we come to the end of our session. I would like. Okay.
Oh, yes. Oh, hello. Yeah, Nidhi, uh, uh, so uh, I wanted to pitch an idea to uh, all the all our faculty and students here. So uh, I mean, this was brought up in the talks of several of in several of uh, these talks that uh, I mean uh, the interaction between the students themselves and uh, the students and the faculty is uh, important. That is, and uh, so our idea is that uh, I mean we are trying to establish a better forum for this than Google Classroom. So we plan to solve various problems with these like uh, uh, so certain questions are repeated and so on. So how the new forum will appear is uh, that there will be a convenient uh, categorizing system for any kinds of questions. All right. And uh, there will be. So uh, I just wanted <laughs> yeah. to say here, uh, have you looked at something called math stack exchange? I'm sure there are other stack exchange. Uh, yes, are you sir. talking of oh, something like be... similar similar platform? Yes, sir. it but would be much like stack exchange. To, yeah. So, but more focused to you want to say something to do with the class, uh, particular class. It might oh, be yes, sir. So even a, yes, our courses can be implemented on it, and uh, mm -hmm. the students can also initiate discussions among themselves there. And uh, I mean, it has several advantages over emails and uh, mm -hmm. the classroom chat box. That's true. That's true. So, sir, I wanted to gauge the general uh, interest of the faculty members towards this idea, since we might ask uh, like uh, a lot of faculty members to implement it for their own courses. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. it's just that sometimes there are so many platforms going on already, like, you know, we are on one platform and then switching to something uh, can be like, you know, uh, time taking or time consuming so but if it is implemented right from beginning it's a uh, it's a like you know better platform than existing one certainly it's a good idea yeah yes i will try to make the shift uh, uh, if people agree to make it as mm -hmm. soon as possible like before mm -hmm. the semester begins mm -hmm. so I, I i think like if you all can uh, sort of you know how it would be easiest for uh, most people to adapt to it is if you can show that it is a better platform right then it's very so you know in my class if i can see that you know 80 percent or 90 percent of the students are saying yes this is a better platform i would obviously be uh, very inclined right. to join it yeah um so, right, for example for example i think why we chose classroom right at that time in beginning is that because all the students are on gmail right so it was yeah. much easier to integrate immediately right very quickly yeah. almost there was no time right so within a week so that is how it was done at that time, uh, last semester, basically. Those things need to be definitely taken into account that right. uh, yeah. accessibility has to be there for all. Uh, yeah. And I mean, uh, for us, that all is very important. It's an extremely important part of for my class that everybody in the class is able to access it as easily as uh, you know the classroom because of the G Gmail integration. That That's sort of yeah. those practical things. That's yeah. it. Nothing else. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we have also uh, tried to make that. I mean, we are uh, looking into all of that. We try to make it as uh, smooth as possible. Right. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, in That's case you, uh, faculty members know about it, uh, so the platform we are considering is uh, Zulip. Mm -hmm. yeah. Either mm -hmm. that. Or uh, Microsoft Teams, and uh, we are planning to take help of our IT department in order to uh, make accounts for everyone and so on. Uh, so um, I, I just uh, this is Nikita here, and mm -hmm. uh, we're thinking of uh, uh, talking about this with, uh, with the deans. I just wanted to know if uh, if there is any clear preference that faculty are having towards any platform, and uh, if there is any clear preference students are having. Uh, because uh, how we compare platforms is just by looking at the available uh, features and the um, you know, different tools that they give to manage classrooms. Um, like, you know, you can take polls and you have different uh, streams within the platform to manage different parts of the course. Uh, 
um like for questions and yeah, so so bunch of features that we compared but we we didn't uh, uh, is there is there something that faculty have in mind um so uh, nikita i don't have anything specific in mind except i was trying i was thinking i was debating whether or i should try um you know for the students while they are learning uh, have an uh, have a you know a, a way for them to answer questions as they are going along in real time as in like when they are listening to the lecture and then you know there'll be a, a pause and there'll be a question and there'll be an answer and that i was just thinking of doing it on something like you know either google classroom or on twitter just from my experience from uh, the other faculty member because it's so easy to download and it's you know just you just need to write like you know few characters so uh, i don't think uh, i have any other i don't have any other ideas uh, i was mainly planning to just use what is available i also wanted to just add i mean uh, I, i'm not uh, i'm really uh, i mean happy with that if there is such platform but uh, as a faculty i can give you a little bit of a story from the other side that uh, there are also lots of students who are very shy some also uh, probably uh, uh, might be hesitant in like like you know because they can't speak good english or something like that so you will you will lose on those students anyway so the per personal interaction talking to faculty directly i mean most of the student come to meet us Uh, otherwise in like you know uh, in office hour or personally and things like that so it's not it's not going to be substitute for that anyway uh, so that will be always there the open platform has this disadvantage in general anyway that uh, there will be always some people uh, you want people to catch catch on that so i mean i personally for example uh, when i teach large class even i say that anybody can write me email any time and i will answer to them and it's like that and of course i get uh, lots of email especially uh, teaching like 200 250 class uh, especially just before exam right i mean there will be like 50 emails per day or something like that but yeah but that's fine i mean uh, uh, those are like more personal questions which has to be answered personally to one person at a time but uh, for common questions is great idea of course uh, so they came up uh, i think sense club was uh, thinking of it from the point of um, having more uh, uh, well to peer interactions for more right. discussion because we would meet over lunch we would be walking from classrooms in iser yes and right meet. right now there is certainly needed i mean right yeah. now that's certainly um, and, needed and uh, yeah. the council was uh, thinking about this uh, for for more student teacher interaction because uh, um i think I, i don't have it on my hand right now but there is a they 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 shown that students don't reach out for help as much um uh, sure. online and uh, you have to actively uh, you yes. know tell them that it's okay to ask for help and yeah. uh, it's yeah. okay to say you don't understand something uh, yes. just just the the human contact needs to be more and uh, that's where the council is coming from um and uh, Uh, after comparing platforms uh, i i would think that anything that a professor is willing to use would work um mm -hmm. does, is it is it necessary? should we try to make one recommendation or uh, should we uh, put forth a set of concerns that we ask that professors try to meet however uh, i think given the time time uh, you know that is there till the next semester i think it's better to come up with a recommendation ah yeah. okay okay because we don't have much time right right uh, but, but you know come up with a recommendation but i think also give uh, because you know it may also be very difficult to get everybody on board given the the less amount of time like sunita is pointing out huh so uh -huh. i would almost say that um, give a recommend give a clear recommendation but also have clauses as to if it is it has to run as a current uh, pattern what would you all need what else would you need i think that would be an important thing Ma'am, so you would suggest that we come up with a time frame in which we can implement this, right? Ah, uh, yes, a time frame, and see another thing is, see, it's important that you um give the you know give enough time for transition to that platform, right? Because see, ah, uh, we are yes. we've been told about this online teaching uh, like about you know uh, a while back, so we are all. 
uh, gearing on for it for a while. So right now, so you know, semester starts in 14 days from today. So yeah. whether even if you announce it today, whether there's enough time for people to orient themselves to that and make it a successful outcome um, uh, is, is what you have to think about. So that's why I feel like, um, uh, yeah, the time, uh, if you give, if, if it's really easy to transition, yes, but I, I don't know how every, whether everybody will be on board to that transition to another platform. But something complementary um, with uh, Google Classroom. Yeah, something complementary with Google Classroom is, is not a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That it's is common. always welcome. Yeah. Yes. Since classroom doesn't have a a chat uh, sort of place, it um, has a chat board, but it's not very good. I agree. Yeah. With you. Yeah. It's the only thing we have right now. Yeah, that's where you post to the whole class and um, yeah, yeah, that's the right. something. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we weren't sure how to go about this. Uh, we've been thinking about it for. A few days. Uh, Ma'am, uh, to the faculty, is it fine if we like uh, mail you with uh, some of the details about like how we are planning to implement this? And like, I mean, if you have time, you can give us some suggestions or comments. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, right now is the time that we are also learning, so it's yeah. also good that pe other people also tell what is the need, and then we'll accordingly uh, adjust to it, right? That's also an important thing. Yeah, but see, finally, if you want this to be pan faculty, pan courses, it has to go through the dean's committee and all that. Yeah, exactly. So yes, we can give you our suggestions and all, but the pace at which it has to happen, it I'm I'm just uh, I'm saying it might be a little too late for that, huh? For it to pass through all of the things. So doing something complementary may be a more um, executable solution right now. Where it's not mandatory, but it is complementary if somebody can do it and as a trial for this semester or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, I agree with Amrita. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, with this, we come to the end of the discussion. Uh, I would again like to thank all the faculty members who joined us uh, for this discussion today. This was really enriching. And thank you all of you for being here. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank yeah, thanks. yeah, thanks thank a you. lot. It was very helpful for, uh, for me, for sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you.